This is another in a series of videos where we're looking at how these three distributions, the distribution of a population, the distribution of sample means, and a t-distribution can be used in concert with uh, R to, uh, to solve problems about confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. So let's look at uh, this next problem. It's uh, got a lot of interesting parts to it. Okay. So we want to, we're going to read the problem and see how it fits into this scheme of these three distributions. Uh, Andrew thinks that people that live uh, a happier, uh, healthier lifestyle uh, than other people, people that are in a rural environment. Uh, he believes that the average lifespan in U the USA is 77 years. Okay, but a random sample of 14 obituaries from a newspaper from a rural town shows that the average of those 14 people lived to be 88.95 years with a standard deviation of 1.72. So the question is, does this support his hypothesis? So let's look and see what's happening here. There, we've got to worry about a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. They're going to ask us to report these in this problem as well. Okay. The null hypothesis is suppose that the mean of the rural people is really just the same as the mean for the entire U.S. Okay, the null hypothesis always involves an equal sign. Uh, who's our hero here? Andrew. Andrew believes that the mean of, of people that live in, in rural areas is bigger than 77. He thinks that they're healthier as measured by uh, lifespan. Okay, so they've asked us to record that information here, which uh, we can do. Uh, mu is equal to 77, and mu is, oops, mu is greater than 77 is, is his hypothesis. Now the next thing that they wanted us to do is find a test statistic. So let's look at where that test statistic comes from. Okay, he, he took a, a sample, remember. Just pull that where we can see it. He took, he took this sample of 14 obituaries. So he's able to look at those obituaries and find out how old the people were when they died. So our sample size is N. And these folks in Idaho, the average of those 14 was uh, was 80.95. So up here somewhere is that average. X bar is 80.95. 80 80.95. And remember... The null hypothesis is saying that the mean is equal to 77. And so the this mean over here is 77. Okay. Now, what we're interested in is how this number shows up in, uh, in a t-distribution. Uh, and we can find that because that, that translation formula going from, from this distribution of sample means to the t distribution is easy. We're just going to need to, to take, let me change the color here so we can kind of keep track of what we're doing. We're just going to need to take that 80.95 minus the 77. Okay, that's how far our score is from the hypothesized mean divided by the standard error, and the standard error is the sample standard deviation, 1.62. Do you see it there? One point, and I forgot what it was. 1.72, I'm sorry. 1.72, and all of that divided by the square root of the sample size, which is going to be 14. Okay, now of course, 
R is the way to do that calculation. And that's going to be a T value. So I'm going to assign it to T uh, so that I can keep track of it here. Uh, we're going to take something divided by something. This part on top is 80.95 when minus 77. Whenever I start a parenthesis in R, I always end that parenthesis and then come back and fill in what's there. That way I don't have to be uh, futzing around and trying to figure out where parentheses start and where parentheses end. So 172 divided by the square root of open parentheses, close parentheses, and what goes in there is a 14. Okay, so there's that T value, and I can ask what that is. That's my test statistic. Okay. The test statistic, statistic is what the score in uh, the distribution of sample means ends up being when it gets translated down to a t-score. Okay. So there that is. So now the question is, is this evidence uh, strong enough to support at a 10% confidence level uh, Andrew's conjecture. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is come here and let's see if I can find still another color. Uh, let me maybe use this color for now. So we need to come down here and find the T value so that 10% is to the right of that. Uh, so I'm looking for a value here, some T value, so that the area to the right of that is, uh, is 10%, point 0.1, okay? And that's gonna be easy to find. That's where I'm going to use R. Where is R? There it is, okay? So what I need to find is QT of 1 minus 0 0.1. And the degrees of freedom here is going to be equal to 13. It's always one less than the, the sample size. Okay. Oh, so that picture, that's very interesting. That picture says that this T is way, way up here. And my sample statistic is way, way down there. So, so the, the sample statistic is, is a long ways away compared to that 10%. So the, the p-value is low. The null hypothesis must go. We're going to reject the null hypothesis here. This is really quite strong evidence for, uh, for Andrew's conjecture. So the answer... Yes, uh, this is strong evidence for Andrew's conjecture. Let's check our answer and verify that things are okay. Great.